Oh, come on, praise the Lord, everybody. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Come on, hallelujah, hallelujah. Amen. Let's set this atmosphere for worship. Amen. Come on, Amen. let's set this atmosphere for praise. For this is hallelujah. the day that the Lord has made. Amen. And we shall rejoice. Amen. We shall rejoice. Yes. We shall rejoice yes. and be glad in it. Yes. Come on, take just a few more seconds and make his praise glorious. Yes. Come on, take just a few more seconds and open up your mouth. Take just a few more seconds and transform your home into a sanctuary. God is getting ready to move today through his word. God is getting ready to move today. And nothing is going to be the same. Nothing is going to be the same. God, we give you the glory. Hallelujah. Come on, just 10 more seconds. Give him the praise. Come on, let's let our praises rise. Let's let our praises rise. Hallelujah. Worship the Lord on this morning. Yes. Give him all the praise and honor that he's due. Yes, sir. Hallelujah, Lord. We bless your name. You're awesome, God. You're so awesome. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Lord. I love you, Lord, today. I love you, I love you, I love you. I love you. I love you. I love you, Lord, today. I love you, Lord, today. Because you cared for me. Because you cared for me. In such a special way. In such a special way. That's why I praise you. That's why I praise you. I lift you up. And I magnify your name. That's why my heart is filled with praise. That's why my heart is filled oh, with praise. I love you. I love you. I love you, Lord, today. I love you. I love you. I love you, Lord. I love you. I love you, Lord, today. I love you, Lord, today. Because you cared for me. Because you cared for me in such a special way. In such a special way. That's why I praise you. That's why I praise you. I lift you up. And I magnify your name. And I magnify your name.
just because you are amazing. You woke us, us up on this morning and you started on us our way, God. I lift my hands. I lift my hands in total adoration to you. You reign on the throne. You reign on the throne. For you are God. For you are God and God alone. Because of you. Because of you, my cloudy days are gone. And unto you I can sing this song. I can sing to you this song. I just want to say. I just want to say that I love you more than anything. More than anything. I lift my hands. I lift my hands. I lift my hands in total, total adoration unto you. Lord, you reign on the throne. You reign on the throne. For you are God. For you are God. God and alone. God alone. Because of you. Because of you, my cloudy days They're all are gone. And unto you, I can sing. I can sing to you this I just song. Wanna I just want to say that I love you more than anything. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I love you, Jesus. I worship and adore you. Just want to tell you, Lord, I love you more than anything. No worries, I'm going to say it one more time. I love you, Jesus. I worship and adore you. Just want to tell you. Lord, I love you more than anything. I love you. I love you, Jesus. I love you, Jesus. I worship. I worship and adore you. I just want to tell you. Just want to tell you that I love you. That I love you. Thank you for waking us up on this morning, God. 
We thank God for uh, having our praise team with us this morning. We truly count it a blessing for them to be back in the building. God bless you. We can truly say that we love you, Jesus. Amen? Amen. Listen, do me a favor real quick. As you are uh, coming into the broadcast, continue to share this message. Go ahead and share it right now. That's good. Thank you. Thank you so much. Go ahead and make watch parties. Share it with your family and friends. We thank you. That is our new way to evangelize right now. Amen. God bless you. I want to talk to you from the book of Philippians. Philippians chapter 1 and verse 6. And the word reads, being confident of this very thing, that he which have begun a good work in you will perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. I want to talk to you from the subject, a greater destiny, a greater destiny. Would you pray with me? Father God, we just thank you for the blessings of this day. God, we thank you for your Holy Spirit. Now, God, we ask that you continue to be with us during this preaching hour. God, we ask that you would touch the hearts and minds of those that are listening. God, we ask that you would be with me, God. God, give me the sensitivity to your spirit to hear what you're saying, that I may give it to your people in your son Jesus' name. Amen and amen. A greater destiny. As I surveyed the last seven months of this fickle, uh, fluctuating, and unpredictable year, I can't help but to thank God for his divine help, grace, and wisdom for us as a church. God has helped us to maneuver the meandering changes of the time. He has allowed us to be under house arrest, much like Paul was in Rome in this Philippian narrative. God has pushed all of us to a place of confinement. He has guided all of us to a personal confinement that is tailored and custom made to get our attention. Am I right about it? Not only has God guided us personally, but he also have arrested and summons us to the right priorities. No longer are you concerned with the superficial things of life. As long as I have good health, all is well. As long as I got food on the table, and a roof over my head. All is well. As long as I can depend on Jesus, everything will be all right. Anybody believe that everything is going to be right, uh, all right? If you believe that everything is going to be all right, send me some responses. Let me know that everything is going to be all right. See, regardless of what you may now see or have uh, seen or maybe felt, the truth is our greater destiny and days are ahead of us. We're not finished products. Uh, we are still in God's plan. God is planning a new destiny for us. We're not a finished product as a church. We're not a finished product 
as a believer seeking the will of God. You are still a miracle in progress. You are still uh, a person that have not fulfilled all of your potential. The work God began in you, he will finish it. What God started in you, he will complete it. You may be in the midst of the greatest battle of your life. Hell hounds may be behind you or against you. Maybe you're in the middle of a trial, an affliction, or a setback that you cannot seem to find any way out. But I have good news for you this morning. God has decreed and declared he has begun a good work in you. Somebody need to shout good work right there in your living room. If you believe that God still has some work for you to do, you should shout good work right there in your living room, in your bathroom, in your bedroom. Maybe you even in your uh, PJs right now. You should shout good work. See, God has placed you in a situation that is beyond your control and your thinking. He's in the process of promoting you through his progressive revelation. He will spoon feed you grace and mercy to get you back to him. He will feed you ideas, uh, thoughts of possibilities. He will cause you to walk to the edge of your abilities and dares you to take the next step, which is faith to begin your greater destiny. Who am I talking to this morning? Am I talking to you? You know you're at the edge of something. And all God is asking you to do is take one more step. That step will put you at a greater destiny. See, it is here that we uh, reset our faith with the assurance that I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. It's anyone that believes that God is, has something greater working for you. Greater is coming for you. Oh, yes, greater is on its way. See, Paul, in conjunction with uh Timothy, uh, he addresses the saints at Philippi, and he gives them his uh, benediction. And basically what he says, he says, thank God for their conversion. Thank God for their conversion and union together. He expresses with his uh, uh, persuasion that God will continue his work among them. Uh, See, Paul, he uh, continues to tell them uh, to be uh, strong because he has strong affection for them. He prays that they be filled with the salvation of God. How many of you are praying for loved ones right now that they may be filled with the salvation of God? When they are filled with the salvation of God, they can get to a greater destiny. See, here in our, here in our text, Paul reminds the saints to be uh, confident. What is confidence? Uh, Cambridge Dictionary says it like this. Being certain of your abilities or having trust in people, plans, or the future. Uh, Are you uh, certain about your abilities? Are you putting all of your trust in people, your intellect, your plans? What the Bible tells us in Psalms 118 is better to trust in the Lord than to put confidence in man. See, you know, I don't care how well intended a person can be circumstances can cause you to falter in your promise. Am I right? See, you know you uh, have great intentions to help someone, but 
what had happened was, yeah, yeah, you know what I mean. But what had happened was, you know, mama and them got back too late and I couldn't get to you. They had great intentions to come help you, but something happened. A circumstance came up. See, when that circumstance came up, they broke their promise. They broke their trust. Well, Paul is reminding the saints that the Spirit of God would not forsake you. Let me say that again. The Spirit of God will not forsake you. He will stay with you to the very end. And to you appear before the judgment of Christ to be glorified. Paul, by the Spirit of God, has left us a reminder to be confident in the power of God. How many of you are willing to be have confidence in the power of God? I'm talking about God, the one that woke you up this morning and started you on your way. The one that uh, breathed life into your body. See, when we put our confidence in God, uh, God will not let us down because we know that there should be nothing lacking in God's part when it comes to supporting us. Uh, he, he allows us to make wise decisions. He allows us to become holy. He allows us to be happy. He brings the kingdom to us. He, and, and not only will he allow us to be part of the kingdom, he will allow us to have some of the glory. Amen. He will get the glory. We will give him the glory. See, God will bring you to uh, bring you to a place that's greater uh, than you can ever imagine. He will bring you to a new place somewhere you've never been before. God has a greater destiny for you in your future. Oh, don't faint. Don't faint. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. God still has you on his mind. God is telling us today, I don't care. Uh, he don't care if you got pushed back in the back of the line. He don't care if you grew up on the wrong side of the tracks. Uh, if you have setbacks, he which begun a good work in you will perform it into the day of Jesus Christ. Oh, if you believe that, if you believe that, let me know. Let me know. Oh, let me know that you believe that today. See, I, I know that's true because uh, there are a few witnesses in the Bible. Uh, Job experienced great loss. But in the end, the Lord blessed him twice as much. Yes, in his latter end, uh, it was better than his beginning. So the Lord blessed the latter end of Job more than his beginning. And he can do the same for us right now. All through, all through what we're going through, God has a way of blessing us. And I'm believing in the latter days of this COVID pandemic and racism that God will bring us to to uh, to a place where he fulfill his promises. COVID-19 racism doesn't have enough devils in hell to keep God's uh, plan and purpose uh, from our lives. That's right. God will fulfill his purpose in your life. If you believe that you should type amen. See, God uh, didn't bring you this far to leave you. He has too much invested in you for you to give up. See, the White House is not in charge of your life. God will bring you out of the trials, the afflictions, and the setbacks that you're experiencing. God brought Joseph out of the pit, Israel out of Egypt, Daniel out of the lion's den, and the three Hebrew, uh, Hebrew boys out of the fire. Anybody know what I'm talking about? Anybody know that God can bring you out of that situation? See, many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivered them out of all. That's all. I don't care what it is, what you've been going through, sickness. God can bring you out of it. 
He wants to bring you to a greater destiny. Whatever that destiny is for your life, God can do it. See, no storms are made to last forever. The sun will shine again. A greater destiny is on the way. Somebody ought to shout greater destiny right there in your home. That's it. Thank you, Lord, for greater destiny. Greater destiny. See, you are the sons and daughters of the Most High. He's the one that sits high and looks low. He's the one that can change things for your life. I'm talking about our God. God, the one that can change your destiny to make it a greater destiny. God has made an investment in you through his son. Yes, Jesus Christ is that investment for your life. God has invested the blood of his son named Jesus. You have been bought with a price. Amen. How many know that you've been bought with a price? God has an investment in you, and he's not going to uh, leave you alone. He wants some dividends from you. In other words, you need to do some work. Give God a payback. Amen? Amen. Amen. We thank you. Thank you, God. Thank you, God, for a greater destiny. That's on the way. Oh, if you believe that God has something great for you. Oh, just, just, just send a heart. Send a heart. Send something over social media. Thank you. Thank you. That's good. That's good. Oh, we thank you for tuning in today. We thank you for this message today. God has been mighty good to us. If you are desiring a greater destiny uh, with God. You must become part of the family of God. Anybody know anything about becoming the fam part of the family of God? Yes. Right now, I want to invite you to the family of God. And it's a very simple uh, way that you can join this family. Uh, Romans 10 and 9 tells us that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shall believe in thy heart that God has raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. Yes, if you are desiring a relationship with God and you want to be saved, you want to be engrafted into this family, will you pray this prayer with me? This prayer says, Lord Jesus, I know you love me, for you died on the cross for my sins. Right now, by faith, I accept you as my Lord and Savior. Come into my heart, cleanse me, and make me whole. Thank you, Lord, for saving my soul. In Jesus' name, amen. Listen, if you prayed that prayer for the first time, why don't you just type, I believe? Why don't you go to our website, uh, www.newbethelroseville.org? Amen? Amen. And listen, while you are at our website, um, we, can, we can take uh, a love offering at that time. We do have Giveify. We continue to encourage all of you to continue to uh, sow into this ministry. We uh, ask that you continue to pay your tithes and offering right online. And if you're not able to do that, we, we have set hours that you can come and drop it off right here at the church. Amen? Amen. Amen. Listen, I am so excited and happy for this word. I just pray that it bless someone this morning. Amen. Amen. We just thank you for tuning in. We thank you for your faithfulness in your giving and in your serving. Amen. Amen. Listen, 
we're going to go ahead and close out in our customary way. And that is with Philippians 4 and 8. And the word reads, finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are good report, if there be any virtue, if there be any praise, think on these things. God bless you, New Bethel, and I love you, and there's nothing you can do about it. Go in peace. Amen.